Well, I'm one of those people who always wondered about my past, about my true family history, and where I got an uncommon name like Screven. I'd always assumed it came from times when slaves took or were given the names of their masters. But when I was a child and would ask older family members about it, all I ever got was unfinished stories, untold secrets, and unanswered questions. It all remained a cloaked mystery until a few weeks ago when I headed south in an RV and started searching for answers in a rural place in Georgia called Screven County. The rural southern oasis known for 200 years as Screven County, but unknown to me for most of my life. Today, it is no longer just a place on a map a thousand miles from the northern streets of my birth and generations away from my life today. Since I was a child, I had heard a myriad of stories of Southern hate and hard times, and because of that, I never really wanted to come here, but I did. Here, no one knew me, but my last name was everywhere, on a hospital, an airport, a tire store, on a street corner, on license plates. As I looked around and discovered, I felt deeply this all had to mean something. See, it says, Screven County was created by an act of the General Assembly of Georgia, December 14th, 1793. It was named for General James Screven. It's so eerie to see my name like that. I don't know whether it has any meaning or connection to me, but it must. Here in Screven County, I found the first clues that might help solve the mystery of my family name, but I wasn't sure. What I did learn was the name Screven came from a white family that moved to America from England and settled in Georgia in the 18th century. A hundred years later on this island east of Savannah are the remains of a Spanish-American war fort named after James Screven. His descendants were many and prominent. There was a Colonel John Screven during the Civil War. I even found an image of him. He was wealthy and apparently owned many slaves, slaves who may have been my ancestors. I believe without any proof really that my family took its name from their master, John Scriven. It could be association with the Scriven family. Your ancestor could have been a Scriven, a white Scriven and they, you know, may have chose that name. Screven County historian Alex Lee's ancestors once owned slaves. He may have shed some light on part of the mystery of the Screven family. You've really got to consider that, that so many of the slave descendants, you know, so many of the slaves were um, offsprings of the white family. And that's, that's so, so common. Screven County was an enigma to me, alongside the tasteful order of homes on Main Street where white families reside, stood the other part of society here, some black families still in the shadow of a better life, in a way, still in the shadow of the Civil War. And then the almost surreal images of the Southern past, tar paper shacks in Screven County, frozen in time, it seemed, with exotic Spanish moss and the relentless Southern sun framing the past, lest anyone who comes here might think times have really changed. I needed help and traveled two counties south to the great Southern port city of Savannah. Here again, in many ways, it appeared time had stood still. Alongside signs of the New South were carefully preserved images of the decidedly Old South, times gone by. The beauty was staggering here. And it was in this city, on my odyssey to find the truth, that I revisited the only relatives I have in Savannah. Is that you? Yes. Hello, hello, I both of you, know. hello. No. <laughs> I had not seen them in 20 years. First cousins, sisters who in their 80s lived in a neighborhood far from the glistening city. They knew nothing of the Screven's connection to Screven County. Yeah, yeah Screven's 
is in Savannah, but I don't know no scrivener of us in Savannah. So playing a frustrated amateur genealogist took me to the Georgia Historical Society in Savannah to search ancient records for more clues. Tomorrow, I'll show you some of the evidence that may unlock my family mystery hidden in Scriven County. Well, it isn't easy taking a step into your past. You never know what you may find. You might find something that disturbs you. In my journey to solve the mystery of Screven County and the mystery of my family name, there were some surprises. <laughs> Just a few weeks ago, my journey into my family's past brought me to the Georgia Historical Society in Savannah. There are some people in the census books that were slaves that had the last name Scriven. But we are not sure if that person is who you're looking for. Savannah is a city where my ancestors, had they lived here around 150 years ago, would have been slaves and servants to the mansions that are majestically preserved all over the city. But the majesty cloaks my mystery. Where did your family originate? That, of course, is the question that brought me here, to Georgia, and to a little-known place near Savannah called Screven County. I felt Screven County held the answer, but even though my last name was everywhere here, no one had any clues to my family. The Scriven of Scriven County, and there's another little town named Scriven, but I had never, you know, met anybody by the last name of Scriven. Black or white? Black or white. That was the first time today. Undaunted, I continued looking for my genealogical roadmap, scouring through ancient Scriven County record books, slave lists that displayed the prices human beings were sold for, and census documents that contained names like mine, even a variation of that name. I came with little information, really. My dad, Earl Screven, died 10 years ago of Alzheimer's disease, just as I became intensely curious about where we came from. But all through my childhood, he never talked about the family origins and never about slavery. So before heading south, I sat down in Brooklyn with my father's only surviving brother, Cleo, who gave me the only family lore he knew. After the Emancipation Proclamation, that uh, my ancestors had a privilege to uh, maintain the name of the masters or to select one for themselves. And I understand that my uh, ancestors' name were Green. And uh, my uh, ancestors chose to change their name to something else, which became the name of Screven. This I had never heard before. I began talking with my uncle about my adventure into the Screven past. My uncle also talked about my great-grandfather, his grandfather, Cyrus, whose name I had also never heard before. Surprisingly, my uncle also had a framed image of Cyrus's wife, Mariah, drawn in the previous century. So that was all I had as I asked for help in Savannah. When was your great-grandfather born or deceased, whichever. I know his name. Okay. Cyrus Screven. Possibly it might have been Green at one time. Cyrus Green? Mm -hmm. But that's all, again, also family lore. As a matter of fact, in one of the census books, which is not here right now, it's downstairs, in the 1850 uh, census book of Georgia, we have a Cyrus Green. Well, this was all somewhat startling. Was it another clue to help solve the mystery? I had never factored the name Green into my search, but apparently it was part of family lore that I had never heard. Now I'm faced with the question, am I a Green or am I a Screven? 
My search took me next to the place where my father was born, across the Georgia state line into Ridgeland, South Carolina, just a few miles from Screven County, where I met up with an 83-year-old man named T. Redmond, who knew my whole family. About 12 years old when I come to South Carolina. Where did you come from? Over in Georgia, about over. Where in Georgia? Uh, Scriven County. <laughs> Scriven right? County, yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. He, he talked yeah. about seeing my father as a child on my grandfather's land. Your daddy used to plow out you on Saturday evening and over yonder and all about. Do you remember seeing that? Huh? Do you remember that? Sure. This is the community where my grandfather, Reverend Samuel Scriven, raised his many children, 22 from two wives. A church he named and founded 96 years ago stands on the same spot of the original frame building. And the Screven family homestead once stood here where this housing complex now stands. This tree is the same one in this old picture of my father's home, where a fire in 1930 killed one of my aunts and a cousin. I witnessed it. I, uh, if I am mistaken, I helped put them in the casket. And then T. Redmond took me to my grandparents' gravesite in a segregated South Carolina cemetery that is still segregated today. And it was here that I saw for the first time the grave sites of the grandparents I never knew. And then, a few feet away, a startling discovery for me, an answer to part of my mystery, something I never expected to find. This is what we were looking for. Oh, yeah, I'll be talking to you. I'll come right to you. This is my great grandfather's grave, yeah. Cyrus. Huh? Yeah. This is Cyrus Screven. <laughs> No one had ever told me this grave was here. For some reason, no one ever spoke about its existence to me. Seeing his grave was almost worth my journey. My great-grandfather was born a slave in 1835. He died four years before my father was born. But still, I had questions left unanswered. Tomorrow, my search for answers into the mystery of Screven County takes some more unexpected turns. Discovering my great-grandfather's grave just a few weeks ago in a segregated black cemetery in South Carolina was an emotional moment for me, a moment that made me reflect on my family and wonder why so many stories were left untold. This says Cyrus Screven, born March 10th, 1835, died December 8th, 1915, asleep in Jesus. Until this trip into America's Southland, no one had ever told me my great-grandfather's name, and I stood there at his grave wondering who this person was. This person born a slave, and why did the family not pass on his memory to the next generation? I had so many questions. Cyrus Scriven lived to spawn a family that trickled down to me and my brother Earl. My great-grandfather and his wife Mariah gave birth to my grandfather Samuel, born in 1866. Some of his children, the last of 22, including my father Earl Sr., withstood the injustices of the South until they could stand it no longer and headed north by train. In New York City, my father and his brothers and sisters began to lead their lives in what ostensibly was a new world. My aunt, Daisy Scriven George, a woman ahead of her time, a labor organizer who encountered First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt in the 1940s. She has traveled to Africa, has connections to the United Nations, and has received 50 awards for her life of service. Today, at the age of 89, I asked my aunt why the stories of slavery, the Screven family past, and a still mysterious connection to Screven County, Georgia, 
were never passed on. I didn't know Scavenger County, but... Um, you didn't know it at all? No, I had not No kidding. I left home when I was just left. But they didn't talk about it even? No, 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 no. Isn't that eerie? No. Well, I mean, because I so never... What could they, what could they, they could, no one had talked to us about slavery. <laughs> they wouldn't talk about slavery, so why would they talk about Scrabbing County? Is that what you're saying? That's right. That's right. That's, that, that's Lewis in Manhattan Avenue and White Plains. My uncle, Cleo Screven, and his sister, Sarah Screven Harrigan, tried to find answers to the past for years, but they kept hitting walls of silence. We didn't talk too much about our ancestry. In fact, uh, a lot of us, we migrated here and there, and we didn't really talk too much about our upcoming upbringing. They never discussed that it was a no-no to, 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 it seems like, to go back over the family tree. I'm noticing now a lot that um, th th everybody got a story on their mother or their father or somebody, but uh, we seem not to have been ready for that or, or they figured it was in the past and that was it. And so it was a stony wall of silence that my elders dealt with when they were children, as their elders closed ranks to keep the unpleasant memories of slavery times from moving forward. That story will make you cry. Yeah, right. My mother, Carrie Screven, says my father I, I didn't even talk to her about the deep family past. But in her own family in the South, there was also degradation to emerge from, like the time in the early 1940s when she was traveling on a bus with her very light-complexioned brother, who was in uniform and who was often mistaken as a white man. Blacks were forced to sit in the back of the bus because of Jim Crow laws, and that is where they sat that day. So the bus driver pulls over and stops, and he comes back in the back of the bus, and he tells Plue, my brother, we call him Plue, his name was Ronald, to get up and come to the front. And Plue says, I'm a Negro. So he looked at my brother as though to say, you know you're lying, but get up and come on up front anyway. So of course, my brother left, left me sitting in the back. So we sat separate all the way up to 200 miles, and then when we got to my little town where we got off, my brother put his arms around me as though to say, you know, it's okay. When we got off the bus, and the bus driver looked at my brother as though to say, you dirty dog, you or something, you know, it was so, I, I look back at it now, it was so pathetic. These are stories that every black family can tell about life in America. In many places, the pain has not gone away. And in my family, there are still so many stories left untold. Well, I left Scriven County with many questions left unanswered. The voices who could give me answers silenced by time. Well, I suppose I didn't find everything I was looking for. I wanted a smoking gun, as it were, that provocative clue that told all about my family and how we got our name. But even with all the mystery and the history that I never learned, I gained something here, a connection to the past that I did not have before, a deeper sense of the land and the people of my family. Who knows? Maybe in the end, it will help me understand myself a little better. I'm Ken Scriven.